Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash pro revenge. This story was posted by user Ambulance Driver 2. Entirely too many years ago I started to work at a fast food company. Let's call it Southern State Not Baked Poultry. Southern State Not Baked Poultry wasn't a bad first job. I was 16 and the assistant manager at the location was my best friend's stepdad. So we took what was tedious and menial and tried to make it fun. He was actually a really good manager and genuinely cared about the people who worked for him. We would do silly stuff before the store opened while we were doing prep. He would have music playing loudly from his office as long as everything got done and done well. He really didn't care if we had fun doing it. We'll call him Larry. This story is not about him though. This story is about our store manager. We'll call him Tim. Tim was the exact opposite of our assistant manager. Everything had to be taken seriously. Fun was outlawed. I genuinely hated working with Tim. Tim was an egocentric, power-hungry, petty little man with delusions of grandeur because he was a manager for Southern State Not Baked Poultry. Tim's approach to managing was to work the employees until they burned out. When they did, fire them and hire someone else. Needless to say, morale when Tim worked was in the garbage. Tim hated that Cruz would prefer working with Larry instead of him. He hated that Cruz had fun when Larry was working. He hated that our store's numbers were always better when Larry worked. Mostly, he just hated everyone. But one thing that he absolutely hated was a silly little thing Larry did. If it was before the restaurant opened, he would stick his tongue between his teeth and lower lip and shout out, Honing! To which every employee just walked in. It sounded absolutely ridiculous. I would always do the same thing back, which ended up something sounding like Hi Wowie! A perfect example of what an ass Tim was is this. There was a young woman who, due to a variety of stressors, attempted to commit suicide after a particularly gruelling shift working with Tim. After she had recovered, she came back for her last paycheck and Larry was working. Not a coincidence, she'd called the store to find out what day he was working. So Larry sat her down out in the lobby, bought her lunch, brought her last check out and sat and talked with her for about an hour. It was after the lunch rush and he had the time, so he made sure she was doing okay, talked about whatever she wanted to talk about. By the time she left, she was smiling, but had tears on her cheeks. She had never had someone just sit and listen and let her talk of everything that was going on. Well, the next day, Tim had come in and hauled Larry into the office, his words, and I can quote them exactly because the office was a tiny little cube with no ceiling. Just a place to sash paperwork and pewter. The next time the suicide queen comes in, tell her to do it right next time. So now you have a clearer picture of exactly how petty and vindictive this little man was. Here's where the revenge starts. We were scheduled to have the regional and national bigwigs for Southern State Not Baked Poultry come through our area for an annual inspection. Tim had his eyes set on being one of those bigwigs, at least for the region. Why wouldn't he be? He did everything by the book. That automatically made him a good manager, at least in his eyes. Everything had a checklist and a procedure and a set of written instructions in the book. And if you couldn't meet the expectations set forth in the book, well, Tim would yell at you and berate you because that's how a manager manages, you see. Well, before the bigwigs got to our store, we knew what day they'd be coming. Several of us had agreed that on the day they came through, we would screw up just enough to get Tim to blow his cool because our regional manager and the national bigwigs all believed that Southern State Not Bait Poultry was a family company and that employees were valuable team members. The day in question arrived and the bigwigs were there for their big tour. Whoops, one of the friars hadn't had the oil replaced last night. Oh look, the shaker table hadn't been cleaned. Darn it, we've got way too much coleslaw made up and we won't get through it before we have to toss it. Crap, we don't have enough poultry in the cooker to fulfil the lunchtime rush. Man, someone forgot to preheat the second cooker. You get the picture. After the second time I took a minute too long to get the basket of poultry into the cooker, Tim absolutely lost his shit. Yelling, cursing, throwing things. He actually physically pushed me away from the breading station in the middle of the lunch rush while the regional manager and several bigwigs from National stood there while we had a line several people deep at both cash registers and a lobby full of people eating. Tim stood there, gulping like a fish. His mouth was moving like he was trying to say something, but no sounds were coming out. The room was absolutely quiet other than the beeping of a fryer that was done. I looked at Tim. This was the moment we'd all been gearing up for. I looked down at where he had pushed me. 
a set of handprints in flour on my chest. And I cut loose into him, yelled at him that I quit, took off my apron and threw at him, told him I was tired of his abuse, of his poor management, of how he single-handedly drove morale through the floor every time he walked through the doors. How he was a crappy excuse for a manager and that if he didn't have Larry and a couple of good shift leads, he'd have driven the location out of business a long time ago. All the colour drained from his face and he bolted to the office cube. The national and regional folks ended up comping everyone's meals that were in the restaurant. Interestingly enough, Tim was not fired, but he was demoted to assistant manager. Larry was promoted to a manager. About ten years later, I was working at my current job as an EMT. We had just dropped a patient off at the hospital that was across the street from the same restaurant and my partner was hungry so we drove across the street and pulled in. Now, I hadn't set foot in the restaurant since the day I'd quit but lo and behold, who is working the counter but Tim himself and his name tag still shows assistant manager. The restaurant was empty since it was between lunch and dinner time and I just couldn't help myself. I stuck my tongue between my teeth and lower lip and as loud as I could shouted, Hi Tim! haven't been back there since but that was around 12 years ago i'm willing to bet he's still just the assistant manager there you expertly manipulated a situation to get tim to show his true vile self to the big bosses he was very lucky not to have been sacked but he certainly got what he deserved the only hope is that one day he'll see the error of his ways and alter his behavior to be a better person This next story was posted by user Spongebob No Pants. Last summer I bought a house trailer and decided to rent it out. It needed some work so I posted two months free rent for putting carpet down in the living room, hooking up the hot water heater and putting in a toilet. Got a nice couple with a newborn willing to do it. Great. No lease, month to month, no security deposit and the rent was $450 a month. So they did the work so I didn't ask for rent for two months, everything was fine. Side note, there are a few little state laws that come into play. If you don't pay rent for three consecutive months, you are considered a squatter, which means the landlord doesn't have to fix the property and can actually padlock it and deny you entry. If you're on house arrest and get formally evicted, you could be violated for it. Also, you can be formally evicted even if you have already moved out so the landlord can get rent due. Also, even though there are eviction bans, if it happened before the ban, then it can still go through. Plus a few other conditions that still allow someone to be evicted. It's up to the judge, really. Fast forward five months and still no rent money. Yes, they have a newborn and they were young and didn't have a lot of money, but the husband can spend $1,500 on a new engine for his project car. They can afford to go out to eat and spend money on electrics, but no rent. So after that third month I did nothing. The weather was turning cold, I didn't put in the furnace like I promised, and if they hadn't had a newborn I would have padlocked the house. They were bragging about their tax refund. I gave them a shot to catch up and they basically said they knew their rights and were in a rent strike. Illegally I might add, you will see later. Covid happened, husband got laid off so I gave them a break. When he went back to work I asked for back rent again and was told to fuck off. I finally had enough. I told them they had 14 days to get out or I was doing a formal eviction and seeing he was on house arrest, he knew what that meant. I was honestly trying to keep him from having to go back to jail and keep an eviction off their record. I was trying to be nice and civil. So they left and I cut my losses until I checked the property. Everything they put in that they removed, everything they got free rent for was gone. I got pissed and filed for a formal eviction. It didn't go as they hoped. They said I didn't provide heat so they went on a rent strike. Only they didn't file that with the courts or hold the money aside. They just thought they could stop paying rent. What they put into the trailer was less than the rent. The judge agreed with me that seeing they took everything I was due those two months rent. He started slamming my character so I said, well you didn't tell me you were going to be going on house arrest when you rented the property. Before then the judge looked bored but he perked up. He asked them if that was true. They responded that it was and he was ready to make his ruling. I received 15 months back rent at $450 a month and two grand in damages because the way they removed the stuff they damaged a lot of things. As for him, the judge said he had no choice but to turn the eviction over to his parole officer. Fast forward to this month. His house arrest was violated and he was arrested. They actually had the nerve to ask me to speak on his behalf. I didn't. Ruling was his remaining six months are now being spent in jail. 
They have a bad eviction on the record and they owe me money. Know the law before you play the game. They might have been a young couple with a newborn, but that doesn't excuse them from paying rent. It was incredibly stupid of them to take your initial generosity as weakness and then flaunt the money they do have. Their immaturity shone through when they were petty enough to take out the items that got them free rent in the first place. Your actions were justified. Thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed what you have heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow.